Good morning, everyone. Welcome to Coffee with Casey. We talk about market strategies and market conditions. Today, we're talk going to talk about the five ways of maximizing profit. And I'm going to use examples, not from this year or last year. I'm going to use them from this last two weeks, right? So five examples from this last two weeks. And I'm not talking about we're going to get an extra 10,000 or 15,000. I'm talking about 165,000, 150,000. How do you get 200,000 more than you're supposed to get? So, so I'm going to go through some examples. And, and you know, the funny thing is, at each one of these, the ways that I'm talking about, I could probably give you three examples of each one, right? And they happen every day. They happen every weekend. So what I'm talking about, the five ways, okay, is the first way is a renovation. And we rarely do renovation, but there is a time when you can renovate a house. And I'm gonna give you an example of how a renovation can make serious money. I mean, people literally make a living buying dilapidated houses, fixing them up and flipping them for hundreds of thousands of dollars. I'm gonna talk about how one way is the predictive analysis, how the predictive analysis makes people 100 or 150,000, or in the case this week, $200,000. We're going to talk about staying under threshold. This is where this is where people make a huge mistake. Knowing where the buyer pools, staying under the major threshold, that's the third way, right? The fourth way is the one you've heard us talk about a lot, and this we do on every almost every house, and that is the cosmetics. When you come in, the house looks like 1985. For eight to $10,000, it looks like 2025 or 2024. And guess what? That's what buyers want. Nobody wants to paint right? Nobody wants to paint. You know, you think you don't want to paint. Well, the buyers don't want to paint either. So what we're trying to do is open up the buyer pool, especially when we have a limited buyer pool that we're going to talk about in a second. The fifth way of, of not just maximizing profit, but minimizing risk and keeping the profit. Anybody can make profit. It's keeping the profit. That's the key, right? So the key to keeping the profit is to make sure that a homeowner or a home buyer doesn't come in with a revved up home inspector going to jack you up for 5,000, 8,000, 10,000 or kill the deal. And they will absolutely kill the deal. So our goal, avoid home inspections at all costs. We'll talk about that in a minute. So first thing I want to do, I want to go to the market conditions, right? So, you know, well, there's not a lot of inventory. So everything that goes on the market is selling. That's not true. So let me tell you how I know, okay? So what I do is I said, in, in each market, let's take Fairfax County, under a million dollars. Let's give me all the homes on the market that are active, active with a contingency and pending. So those are the three main categories. Let's say, okay, how many houses do I have? 500, okay. How many of those are just pending? That means they're under contract, on their way to settlement, no contingencies, no nothing. They're on their way to settlement. About one third, right? One third of the homes are under contract. So what that is, is the success rate. What is the success rate of each market? So first let's go over a million dollars in these counties. In Fairfax County, 34% or one third of the homes are under contract. Well, what does that mean? That two thirds of the homes are actively available to buyers. Whether it's active, it's got a contingency on it, and eh, go after those houses, kick the contingency out, right? Or go after the active. So, so we are in an inventory, even though inventory is up about 15 to 20% from last year, it's still way down, way, way down from where it's been over the past 10 years. So we do have an inventory crisis. There is a shortage of houses. So why in the hell is only one third of the homes in Loudoun County, Prince William County, Arlington, Fairfax County? Why is it that they're averaging 35% success rate in those markets over a million dollars? I cannot fathom it. Every house we have goes under contract other than one spooky one where it's in maybe an over 55 and it's a strange market. But, but majority of houses, as you're going to see, and again, these are all recent deals, all getting multiple contracts over list price, way over list price, and uh, no no home inspections and whatnot. So, so this is the market. What you're looking at now is the 
success rate of homes over a million dollars. Now, this chart that you're looking at is a chart of the success rate for homes under a million dollars. Now, under a million is should be more popular because there's a bigger buyer pool under a million dollars. And Fairfax County, only 45% of the homes are under contract. That means, so let me explain, you know, what the difference between buyer market, neutral market, and seller market is. If the number of successful homes under contract is under 40, it is a buyer's market. That means 60% of the homes are available. Between 40% and 60% means it's a neutral market. Neither the buyer or seller are in control of the market. And if it's over 60%, the sellers are in control, you better stand by. The sellers are in control of the market. There's bidding, there's fighting for homes, and prices are going up, okay? What we're looking at right now is under a million dollars is this far from being a buyer's market. And we have no inventory. And that's crazy. I don't, I can't explain that. So when I talk about the five ways of maximizing profit, not only are these people, not only are 60% of the, of the sellers and agents not maximizing profit, they're not even selling the house. So it's just sitting on the market. So that to me is, is disturbing. So let's, at least if you're a listener of Coffee with Casey, you know, these are the things you have to do to make sure that we're the ones getting multiple contracts. We're the ones with the under contract sign. We're the ones with no home inspection. And we're the ones where we walk away with maximum profit. Okay. So, so let's start at the top. And, and again, I'm going to use, these are actual examples of homes that we just sold. Okay. So we went, we actually in the same week, we went to two homes. Um, people had inherited their parents' home in Vienna. Uh, both were getting ported by, by builders. And, and let me tell you, um, when you're looking at a home to be knocked down, maybe that's a builder um, thing. But builders are not exactly having the kind of success right now that they've had in the past. And they have really got to be tight on buying the, at the right price. They have to buy in at the right price. So the offer was $750,000 for this home. We came in and said, you know, if we renovate it or we, you know, we do some things, bring our, our person in, we renovate it. I think we can get over, you know, 900, 950. So, so the bid was 750. We came in, we added $70,000. And, and again, we carry the cost until it got to settlement. We put it under contract. That is $165,000 over, over what they would have got had they gone with a builder, um, uh, you know, the builder choice, right? So that's a lot of money. That's wealth. This is not, you know, you can make another 10,000 or 15,000. Um, some people will walk in and buy that house for 750 and put the 70 in it themselves. That's a business. This is what a business is. So, for somebody that's inheriting a home from mom and dad or this, that, the first thing we want to do is say, if we were to renovate, what would it be for us to renovate? Right. And, and, and what would the profit be? So it's, you know, I always use the term, is it better off alive or dead? Is it better off under the wrecking ball or is it better off getting, getting um, done? So anyways, it is better off in some cases to renovate. And that's what we did. So, Way number one, renovate, right? 750 plus 70 is 820,000. So that's $165,000 profit, okay? So that's the first way. The second way is the predictive analysis. Now the predictive analysis, we use this every week, every day. Um, I talk to sellers on Wednesdays and Thursdays. And what we do is, let's look at this house, the second house on Tapawingo, 121 Tapawingo. It went on for 1.85 million. I think it's worth 1.8 to 1.9. If we're really lucky, we're gonna get 1.9. We decide to test 185. There's nobody in that market. There's nobody looking at it. There's nobody coming to see it. There's nobody uh, loving it online. And, and we were concerned. So I said, I don't think that's our buyer pool. We need to move down to 1799. And of course, the seller did not say this, but I'm sure the seller was thinking this. But you said, you thought it was worth 185 to 19. And that is true. 
but I'm not, when I price houses, I'm pricing it for the buyer pool, not what I think we're going to get. So I said, you know, we got to go to 1.79. This is where everybody stops. This is where realtors are afraid of telling a seller, we need to go down to 1.79 because the seller will say, you said 185 and 19, right? Well, I said, we need to tr find the buyer pool. That's what it is. So most agents will not adjust during that coming soon period because they've already told the seller this is what you know, I think it's going to be. The bottom line is we're listing to catch the buyer pool. The bigger the buyer pool, the more the offers. Sure enough, we drop it to 1.8 million. Here comes the buyer pool. Here comes all the here come all the buyers. Here comes the love. And before we know it, the house is under contract and sold. Now it's now it's sold for $2 million. So not 1.85, not 1 1.9, 2 million. 150,000 over are expected. Now, what happens is why are so many homes on the market? Somebody will see us sell that home for 2 million and say, well, we're going to put it on for 2 million. Well, I couldn't even find a buyer pool at 1.85. So what are you going to find at 2 million? See how everybody overprices? See what it is? This is what's called an anomaly. The house really is worth 185. The house really is worth maximum of 19. But the buyers paid 2 million. Why? I'll tell you exactly why. They had to bid. And there's no escalation clauses. And they had to do a free bid. And so one person bid 185. One person bid 1875. One person bid 1877. One person bid 2 million. One. 120, 130,000 over the other offer. Wow. So, so when you do your predictive analysis, what is one of the key ways of maximizing profit? Because we're finding the buyer pool, right? Once you find the buyer pool, that's where the magic happens. Sellers look at me all the time. Oh, make the magic happen. Make the magic happen. That is the magic. That's the magic, right? Find the buyer pool. Hit the magic. This is another good one right here. So, so this is 1807 Watervale Way. It's a very nice subdivision over Full Cry and in, in Vienna off, off um, Clark's Cross, or Creek Cross, um, Beulah Road. That house was the Mac Daddy of houses. Didn't need fix up, didn't need renovation, didn't need paint, didn't need anything. It was just wonderful. A builder owned it. He had done, you know, all the tricked out stuff to it. Very well taken care of. It's just that perfect model home you walk into. You know, neighbors have been getting 1718. I think it's worth, I think it's going to go 121. I, that's my estimated value is 121. But once you go over $2 million, it, the the air gets a little thin up there, and especially if you're just barely going over. If you think it's two point one million, you know there are buyers at the two point five million dollar range or whatever. But there's not really. You just want to stay under two million. So I talked to the seller, who's a bright guy in the real estate business, a builder. I said, I think we really need to stay under two million dollars. I'm not gonna. It's not really about testing or anything like that. It's just that's where the buyer pool is. We're not moving. Because I'm expecting 2.1 million. So we're under that 2 million. Go look at some houses. They'll be out there for $2,025,000, $2,050,000. You just wiped out three quarters of the market by trying to get another $25,000. It's just ridiculous. People put a house on for $9,55. Everybody looking for a house under $9,50 just lost that house. They, they, don't, they don't see it. They're not going to come bid on it. They didn't see it. So any realtor that lists a house at 955 or 860 or 910, it's malpractice. It's ridiculous. Stay under major thresholds. That is number three, right? In this case, the house that I thought was going to go for 2.1 was $2.27 million. So we got another $170,000 higher. See, 
I'm not talking about making $10,000 a deal or $20,000 a deal. I'm talking about making 100 or 150 or in the case of Tapalingo, 200,000 over list price. We're looking at, I mean, this is, that's $270,000 over list price, 170,000 over what it's worth. Now, hit the threshold. Reason number three, hit the threshold. The next one, nobody wants to do the next one. Trust me, I don't wanna do it. You don't wanna do it. Buyers don't wanna do it. Nobody wants to do it. Make cosmetic updates to the house. Make cosmetic updates to the house. It's the biggest profit center you'll ever have in your whole life. If you went to Las Vegas with $10,000, there's no way they would say, okay, if you bet $10,000, we'll give you $40,000 if you lose. We're going to give you $120,000 if you win. So you're going, now let me get this straight. I give you 10, I bet $10,000. The worst I can do is 40,000 and the most I can do is 120,000. Well, who doesn't make that bet? Everybody makes that bet. Everybody makes that bet, right? So our records show that if somebody puts in up to 1% of the price of a house, they return seven to 10 times the investment over and over. This is another perfect example. This is 15530 Eagle Tavern Lane. Current condition, 875. Please, Lord, can we get 875 for this house? Please. In dated condition and the lighting and the paint and the hardware. But for $8,000, you turn the house into 2024 lighting fixtures, little, little paint, little, <coughs> little hardware. I don't know if that was eight or 10, but it didn't go over 10. It went from 875 trying to get 900, begging for 900. We put it on at 900, we got a million. So the seller for investing 8,000, I don't think it was 10, I think it was eight. Investing 8,000 went from 875 to a million dollars. That's $118,000. That's $118,000. Now, you know, you don't have that much opportunity to make that kind of money, you know, in your life. And it's, these are the opportunities that you have to, cap, you know, capitalize on, right? So the first way, which is, we don't do it that much, right? Renovation. If it's builder or renovate, renovate. Do it yourself. And again, sellers, the heirs don't have to pay the money. We do the work. They get paid at settlement. So you don't have to worry about that. We do it at settlement. And homes that are extremely dated, yes, yes. Well, I'll give you another example. We had we had another uh, example. We had to go out and rip a pool out of the backyard, um, take out sports courts, redo the whole house. I mean, it was just a, a show. And the sellers got, the sellers, the heirs, got 125,000 more than we thought we were going to get. And they never spent a dime. So. So you need to work with a realtor who has contractors that will get paid at settlement. So then you don't have to worry about it. So step one, renovate. Step two, predictive analysis. Make sure we're at the right price. Make sure we found the buyer pool. Step three, stay under major thresholds. Do not go over major thresholds. So again, you're capturing the biggest buyer pool. The next one is the cosmetics. Paint, hardware, lighting fixtures. I know you just painted the house. Got it. Just painted it. It's yellow. That's dated. That's a dated color. You want to make sure that you're in current colors, 224, uh, 2024 colors. And as I tell every seller, put the paintbrushes down. Do not. Do not. Paint that house. Because you could paint it the wrong color. You've got to wait until our people come in the house. I come in there with a 30 something and they get that house just the way we want it. So, so put the paintbrushes down, let us handle it. Don't put in any hardware. Don't make any adjustments. Sometimes you may want to redo an entire bathroom. You'll spend 40 or $50,000, but you'll only add 20, 25,000 to the value of the house. So don't do anything until we get there.
Okay. And if you're thinking of selling three years down the road, we still come out. We still come out. No obligation. We'll come out and take a look at your house. The fifth way and the most important way. I will tell you, I can't tell you how much money this not only makes people, but saves people. Do a pre-home inspection with a seller, um, with a, a seller controlled home inspector. Now, we use a guy named Bob Lamb. Any realtor that's listing a house and does not do a pre-inspection with a seller home inspector is making a huge mistake. We are like 28 for 28. I don't know. What's our number? Is it 25 for 25? Let me just see real quick. We are, uh, well, 37 for 37 as a team. When you include Ferris and Johnny and everybody else, 37 for 37. We had one seller decline to get a home inspection. They got a, they had to get a buyer controlled home inspection. We don't know how that's going to turn out. We're going to find out. But I will tell you that, you know, I can't require sellers to do things, but I tell you, I really push for it now because if you don't do a home inspection, they're going to have a contingent contract. They can walk out for any reason at any time. The home inspector is going to try and milk you for money, get as much as he possibly can, and sometimes kill that transaction. He'll kill the deal. So stay away from home inspections. Bob Lamb is a seller home inspector that we use. He inspects our homes. If there's something wrong, like let me give you an example. One picture on here, there's a crack. The crack in the in the uh, in the slab, not the foundation, but the slab. There's a big difference between a foundation and a slab. Okay, so a slab is dangerous for two things. One, it freaks out buyers. That's it. Just it's just a settling crack. Freak out a buyer. Two, it may let in radon. So radon costs twelve hundred dollars to remediate. So you seal the, the cracks. Make sure all the cracks are sealed. You get inspected to make sure that, hey, these are not a problem. This is not a foundation crack. It's just a settling crack. And you seal it so you have no penetration from, um, from uh, radon gas, right? So that would, that freaks out buyers. If we don't catch that and we just put it on the market and they walk downstairs, they see this big crack in the floor. They're like, oh my God, the house is falling apart. It's not falling apart. That's a, that's a slab crack. That's not a settling crack. I mean, that's not a foundation crack. So there's a big difference in, in things like that. I don't know it. You don't know it. A home inspector knows it, but people trust home inspectors and can rely on what they say. Again, they can catch things we don't see. I don't go on a roof. I'm looking at the color of the paint. I'm looking at the hardware they have. I'm looking at lighting fixtures. Home inspectors are looking at beams. And if there is a break in one of the, the roof trusses, you don't want their home inspector to find out because then it could be what else is wrong with this house. It freaks people out that a, a truss is broken up in the up in the roof. Freak them out. We get it. We get a class A contractor, fix, done, boom, boom, boom. Not a big deal. Very easy, easy fix. Now you get a passing grade. Everything else is fine. Everything's in good working condition. When a home inspector, when a seller home inspector looks at something, he says it's in good working condition. When a buyer home inspector looks at something, he said it's at or past its useful life. You need to get a new one. Now they're starting to add things up. Well, if I need a uh, HVAC unit, HVAC unit is fine. It's working great. Five years, eight years, 10 years, who knows? Currently working. You have the age right there of how old it is. You know what the useful life is. It's on there. So again, the five ways to maximize profit. Renovate. Do the predictive analysis. Stay under major thresholds. Get the cosmetics done to make it look like it's 2024. Avoid home inspections at all costs. Five ways of maximizing your profit. I gave you five examples with an average profit somewhere in the $140,000 to $150,000 a deal. Those are this month. Those aren't throughout the year or last year. Or I'm carrying an example for two years. 
these are all fresh. And not only are they all fresh, are they all happening currently this weekend or this month? But I could give you three or four examples of each one and all is spectacular. So now you understand why I'm a little bit confused, why only 33% of the homes are under contract over a million dollars when we're getting 150,000 over what we thought we were going to get in a market where 66% of the homes are not under contract. My name is Casey Sampson. You've been listening to Coffee with Casey and the five ways to maximize profit when selling your home. You can reach me at 703-508-2535 or Casey at CaseySampson.com. If you want to stay up to date on the market conditions, go to CaseySampson.com, look at Market Snapshot. Julie presents all these graphs in a great way, and you can keep up to date on market. We'll see you again next week. If you need me, give me a call, 703-508-2535. In fact, if you know friends or family or business associates that are stuck in that 66% can't sell or are thinking about selling, selling or have failed to sell, have them give us a call and we'll give them a hand. We'll see you again next week. Bye now.